Hey there, welcome to Pastor Brian's College of Biblical Knowledge, and uh, I forget what number CBK episode we're at. I'll figure it out. It'll be like right around here somewhere. Uh, but uh, here we are. We're going to be in 1 John uh, chapter 4 as we're slowly working our way through uh, the book of 1 John. But here we are in 2020, so of course that means that the election results are going to have problems. I mean, what did we expect? Of course it's going to have problems. It's 2020. Plus, there's so many voter fraud allegations, and who knows if that's enough to swing an election one way or another. I don't know, but there's just enough shenanigans going on so that at this point it is close it is definitely chaos and nobody's going to be happy but then again it's 2020. i saw a statistic oh let's see it was like maybe 10 days it was less than two weeks before the election and it said that uh 68 of people said that the election was a significant cause of stress in their life 68% of people, significant cause of stress. Now that the election's in overtime, how much stress is this causing for our entire country here? I mean, we've been doing elections for a couple hundred years. You'd think we'd be able to figure this out by now. But, you know, I don't know. This is just another crazy thing in 2020. Personally, I, I'm struggling. Um, we had a, a death in the Hotram family last week. Um, uh, my dad's sister, my Aunt Laurel, passed away. And um, I, I just had this extreme sadness last week. I know our hope is in the Lord. We have hope of heaven and everything. And I, I've done plenty of funerals and all of that. But I just had this tremendous sadness, and I haven't been that sad in a long time. And then Friday, Donna Lynn's uh, grandma passed away. And uh, today, earlier today, uh, we watched um, graveside service. Uh, we can't go up there, of course, but uh, oh, my sister-in-law had her phone out, and she was doing FaceTime, so we were, we were sitting at home watching that. Just everything is weird. Plus, we all still live in this COVID world where everything is just weird and restricted. And, and we all know people that have had COVID tests and waiting, quarantining, waiting on results and all of that. And in the middle of just this, this world, this life, this year where everything causes stress, anxiety, and fear, and you name it, everything else, here we are in 1 John chapter 4. 1 John, Jesus' disciple John, he talks about love a lot. Last week we, uh, we looked at this uh, chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, which I remember easily because it was a song. Uh, and um, it, it talks about let us love one another for love comes from God and everyone who loves is, is known of God and, and whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And then we get to verse 9. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world. God showed how much he loved us by sending his son into this world. This year, we've got significant amounts of stress and troubles and difficulties. And all of those are just temporary. All of that is just temporary. God loves you. All of this stuff going on, it is, it is just temporary. God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent his son, Jesus. 1 John 4, verse 9, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. Verse 10, this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take 
away our sins. Jesus didn't come to this world to fix all your problems. He didn't come to make you better looking or make you rich or do whatever you want or make, make the election go the way you want it to go. He came for our most important need, our eternal need, which is forgiveness of sin. This is God's great love for us. He didn't send somebody else. He didn't just wave a magic wand and do it. He sent his only son. John also wrote that, that famous verse in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God's great love for you. doesn't depend on our circumstances or anything else going on in life. He sent his son for your forgiveness of sin. Not to fix temporary problems, but so that you can be with him eternally. That's something I, I thought about earlier today, just watching uh, a graveside service on a, on a cell phone. But God loves you. He loves the whole world. And he sent Jesus out of his great love. He sent his son that whoever believes in him, that whoever is you, anybody, whoever, that is not limited, uh, whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. God loves you. Even though there's times and circumstances where it doesn't feel like it, that doesn't mean it's not true. God loves you. Lord God, I pray that you bless each one watching and listening, that your grace would surround them, that you would let them know how much you love them, that they would recognize their need for your forgiveness so that we can have cleansing from our sin. We can have forgiveness in this life and a home in heaven in the life to come. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Lord bless you, and we'll see you later. Oh, I'm trying to turn off the, the deal. Here it is. <laughs>